Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the Netflix original docu-series Tiger King, episode 6 entitled The Noble Thing to Do. I'll give a recap with photos offset to the side. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. We hear the call from Grady County Jail from Joe, and he's saying that I was asked to bail out Jeff from jail two times. The first time was when he beat up his first wife, Kathy Lowe, and she went to confront him about messing around with Lauren because she was his mistress at the time, and he got violent with her. And the second time is when he got caught smuggling cubs in a Vegas hotel. And Jeff says, you know, me and Lauren, we rented out this mansion in Vegas and animal control came busting through our house like I was El Chapo or something. But all I had, you know, was two baby cubs in there. But the news reports that he had more than that. There was semi-automatic handguns, rifles, and Jeff, when he got back, Staff was saying that things got even crazier. And we see footage of this judge talking to Jeff, telling him to surrender all of the animal, animals that were confiscated and not to do anything illegal for the next year or he would receive major jail time. And Jeff says, you know, Joe locked me out of all of the online banking systems. And I wanted to see all of the statements for the past 12 months. I wanted to see what he was doing. So Lauren and I snuck to the bank and the teller informed me that there were investigators looking at Joe. Um, but she couldn't give me any additional information. But there was uh, a federal warrant. And Jeff approaches Joe and says that, hey, you forged my signatures on checks. I came here to help you. And I saw that 20 times on cashed checks, over $88,000 of misappropriated spending. And this is all while Joe is doing campaigns for president and for governor. And Jeff is screaming at him, you can't funnel and embezzle money. $60,000 in campaign material that you've used. And Jeff says, you know, I came here to help you and you paid me to help you and to do certain things, but you can't do stuff like that for campaign. You can't use Zoom money to pay for campaign material. That's illegal. And right before Jeff kicked Joe out of Zoom, he burned files, computers, all kinds of stuff. And Joe was just burning just any and everything, any evidence. And people didn't know what he was burning and why, but he was burning it for a reason. And Joshua was saying, I hadn't seen Joe this distraught since Travis's death. And it was evident that he hid a lot of stuff and he didn't tell anybody else what was going on. And in the middle of the night, Joe started to ship out cats. Um, and there's camera footages of him uh, doing this. And he's grabbing whatever cats that he could, big cats. Uh, that are worth worth a minimum of at least four thousand dollars each and an employee marcia david she says that we were shipping out as fast as we could big cats to california and all types of areas and selling them um, because we were under the impression that jeff was taking everything from joe Joe is shipping and putting out as many big cats as he as he can. And Jeff is just like, you know, the last time I spoke to him, he I told him to stay off the property. And if he came back on the pro property, there would be a price to pay. And Joshua says that whatever Jeff told Joe, it scared him away. Um, because after that, I didn't see him. And I'm guessing that would be the last time I would ever see Joe Exotic. At an undisclosed location in southern Oklahoma, we see Joe and he's in the truck and he's saying, that I feel like these cats are my responsibility. I bred majority of them and I feel that it's my resp responsibility to take care of them. And I'd rather walk away. Mistakes were made. But, you know, after 20 years, I'm done. I I'm just done. I really feel that Carol will sit in jail for killing her husband. And Karma will come back and get her and put it, put him in jail. And Joe 
had new phone numbers, knew everything. He stayed low. He just took off. And people were saying, hey, Jeff put a hit out on Joe. And Jeff is saying, no, that's just not true. And I didn't take anything from him. The zoo was already mine. Under review with hidden cameras, we see that customers are still coming into the zoo. And when they ask about Joe, the staff has been told to say, well, you know, he's retired. He's been in the business for 20 years and, you know, he's just decided to decided to retire and business is still going. Joshua says that during staff meetings that Jeff would make comments that, you know, Joe Exotic is going down. And Joshua said, I had a very terrible feeling in my gut and thinking, wow, Joe, what have you gotten yourself into? And John says, you know, he used money from the park to pay for all of that presidential and governor crap and word on the street that he wanted somebody to kill Carol. But, you know, we didn't like her and nobody did. And we all said crazy stuff like that. I mean, even I said that he wanted her dead and that, you know, we wish she would go away. But nobody really took action on that. Kelsey says, you know, I don't think Joe hired someone to kill her, but it is possible that He's mentioned it to other people that he wanted her dead. It's it's very possible. And Mark Thompson, one day he recollects where Joe says that, hey, you know, I heard that you can take care of a problem for me in Florida. And he says, well, what problem are you referring to? And he says, well, Carol Baskin. And Mark says, you know, no, well, I, I can't take care of that. No, I can't take care of that for you. Um. But Mark says, you know, no one knew half of the time if Joe was joking or not. He would always say these comments here and there about doing something to her or wishing that she was dead. John says, you know, Jeff's people are pretty crooked. You know, um, he even sold me a stolen Hummer. And I think that there's a case still pending about vehicles that he sells. And under surveillance footage, we see James talking about how I was always there when there would be talk about uh, murder for hire when it came to Carol. He would say things like, I want her dead and, you know, this B word rides this bike trail all of the time and you can just get rid of her right off the track and Jeff starts to look up bike routes and the bike paths of where exactly that she goes and Jeff is saying that yeah I got you know I looked up the route and you know I was just looking up stuff and Travis offered to do it and Joe's just like no you're my husband you'll go to jail And Joe is saying from his call that I never looked up all of that stuff. Jeff is the one who would look up all of those routes and everything. And Alan is saying, yeah, you know, Joe asked me several times to get rid of her. And James says, yeah, Joe thought that since Alan had a heart tattoo that, you know, he had killed somebody. And Joe puts a photo up on his Facebook saying, I finally know where the B word lives. And Jeff is saying, like, what in the world are you doing? Why would you post something like that? And Jeff goes on to say that James um, lets, uh, you know, wants to do a call to Kara Baskin and get this Zoom mess over with, you know. And we're going to tell her that we're, we know everything about him, about Joe to just have him done his head on a platter and this could all be over with and jam james said you know jeff offers me a hundred thousand dollars to do this so james gives a call to carol and carol and her husband remember that day and they said we noticed this 405 call we didn't know what number it was so we didn't answer it and then we see this text message popping up saying if you want information against joe return the call so they immediately sent that to law enforcement And James says, you know, I received this call um, from the FBI Department of Wildlife. And he thought, wow, you know, what's really going on? And Howard is explaining that this explaining that this department is just as possible as powerful as FBI. They just work with people in wildlife and protecting wildlife. And Jeff says, you know, an agent told me, um, James, that I'm in trouble for having this lemur. And that could land me in jail. And my lawyer, I call, you know, I talked to my lawyer and my lawyer is saying that I have to do what they say because, yeah, you could receive some jail time for that. They can hammer you for that. And James said, you know, I thought about it for weeks of what to do at this point. And 
you know, I felt like it was the noble thing to do. So I agreed to be an informant. And I was going to record everything from Jeff and Joe and anything that was at that zoo. John says that it's just crazy. And I think Jeff and James want to help the FBI because they have so much crap going on. And they're willing to do any and everything to get the eyes off of them and place it on somebody else. And James goes goes on to say that in 2017, that campaign stuff um, was just, just more stuff about trying to find out how to kill Carol. And I told the FBI that this guy, Allen, was going to be the guy and the plan to get rid of her. And um, at one point in time that they're going to maybe look at this bike route and that's how they're going to do it. So Carol and her husband, they got a call from agents saying, hey, there's this threat on your life. And Carol is saying that there's always been threats and you're just late in finding out about it. So Amanda Green, a federal prosecutor, said in November 2017, we heard a phone call between Alan and Joe indicating that there was some plot to kill her. And James is saying, you know, there was a time when Alan said, if anyone rats me out, I'll come back and get rid of everybody here. And he would go on these rants and he was crazy because he was doing a lot of cocaine and drinking. And Alan says, you know, yeah, Joe really put his trust in me to do it. And he told me, hide, hunt and get rid of her. And Carol and her husband said, you know, we had guns. We had surveillance cameras put up on the property. We had guns in the car. We had guns in our bedroom, everywhere, any 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 place you can think of where we probably would need a gun, we did it. Um, so while investigating this and keeping an eye out on Alan and his movements from there, from that point on, he disappears. And they have no further information on this investigation because supposedly this was the person that was going to do it. And Carol, she said, well, I heard that the plan was for somebody to drug me and drag me to a swamp. Um, but Alan is nowhere to be found. Um, but Carol, you know, she goes on to explain that I had these feelings that somebody was out to kill me. So we see these text messages between James and Alan. And, you know, James is trying to pull information from Alan. But Alan is saying that, you know, hey, I'm I'm done with this. This stuff is crazy. I don't know what's going on. And it gave this indication that the plot was over and there was nothing to really kind of worry about. They couldn't find where he was and maybe the ploy was already gone. And Alan just wanted to go home to South Carolina. So James explains how the feds said maybe there needs to be this little push in finding out more information. So the feds wanted me to pick up an undercover agent and bring him to Joe. And there would be these negotiations back and forth of possible payments. Um, but eventually, you know, there was no money given or purchases of recommended items for the kill. You know, burner phones, um, um, guns, things that this person would need to get rid of her. So there was nothing legally holding him or Joe and saying, okay, he's serious about this. None of, none of that was any serious indication. It was all talk. So while that was going on, we got Jeff who's dealing with the BS in Vegas and Jeff, um, you know, he's told not to do anything and to stay out of trouble. So James calls Jeff um, about the feds investigation and how they know everything they know names your name is involved as well and now is your chance to tell the feds if you know anything about joe or any illegal activity and jeff says you know i'm dying to tell them what i know and i know that joe wanted to kill carol and he was going to use alan to do it so jeff um, on a recorded call for the feds, calls Allen and says, hey, you need to tell them everything you know. And you don't want to be on Joe's side when this is all done. You want to be on the government side. So the FBI indicated that um, Joe, they, they indicted, excuse me, they indicted Joe because there was enough evidence that Joe offered Allen 3K. And they pinged 
Joe's phone to find his location. And over time, Joe would post these things on Facebook saying, saying that he was in another country. But people knew that water. They they knew that the water was Florida water and that he wasn't far. So they were able to find where he was, arrest him, and they were able to indict him. So then we see this clip of Carol. She goes on her Facebook page to announce to all of her millions of followers that Joe Exotic has been arrested for seeking uh, to do a murder for hire to kill her. And we thank law enforcement for all of their hard work and getting him behind bars. We see a reporter that says, we couldn't get Joe to stop talking. Even though it was like watching a train wreck, he made good television. So whatever he wanted to say, we let him talk. And he just kept venting and going and going from jail, spewing a lot of information and just talking a whole bunch of hoopla. And in the final scene, we see Jeff, Allen, and James, and they're making plans to have a new zoo. Um, closer to, towards the border of Texas, um, right behind Windstar. So they can get Texas and Oklahoma customers. And they have so much to look forward to in beginning this new zoo. Not thinking about Joe, starting new, and just wiping out any and everything that there's any memory or recollection of him. And I, Alan says, you know, I'm glad I did what Jeff told me to do. Or I would be in jail with Joe. And that is the end of the episode. There is so much that needs to be investigated about all of these things. It's very interesting that Joe had this hatred and this envious feeling because look at look at what he had been going through the bad part is is that he said over and over again that he wanted her gone that staff members didn't know if he was joking or if he was for real um and you learn something from that don't joke about stuff like that because it could be taken seriously especially when it comes to something as serious as murder so you can't joke about stuff like that you can't threaten people like that even if you are joking and you're you're find something else to say F say something else that isn't incriminating to 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 make somebody believe that you're serious or indicating or planning to do someone physical harm Let's just say hypothetically he did want to get rid of her. What was the holdup? It's been over 22 years in which he could have hired someone to have her gone. Why go through so many years of lawsuits and losing so much money and then want to do this 22 years later after you've lost everything? Kind of doesn't make sense. And also... It does make sense that you would have these kind artists, literally what they are, Jeff and James, who are known for years of criminal activity and recorded everything and would always have a camera around when approaching Joe. Um, all of them, in my opinion, have done dirty stuff. Joe, Jeff, Alan, all of them. I think it was this cluster of bad things over a long period of time, mishandling and misusing money. So I think they're all guilty of something. But when it comes along to this thing of murder for hire, I'm not 100% convinced. A verbal agreement, though, in law is just as com confirmed as you signing a piece of paper. Um, but when it comes to the court of law, is this hearsay? Do we have any evidence that Joe actually funded through bank account or physical cash do we have any evidence that this was something that was actually given to Allen as some sort of down payment to do this murder for hire and also Carol um it's very very interesting how she has just been consistent and consistent in trying to kick a dead horse as they say in the south and beat a man while he's down the man already has nothing the man already has 
uh, indications and proof that he can't pay you this $1 million that you're seeking. You already won. You already have everything that you need. So why continue to move forward? Um, which is very interesting to me. It seems very uh, psychopath-ish. Um, and I do believe that karma will come full circle. But I do think that this case, several cases, need to be reopened. There's a lot of stuff that maybe wasn't investigated properly. And it seemed like they just wanted someone to go to jail. But once again, like I said, watch what you say because that could land you in jail. You have to think about threats. You have to think about how... This is important when you're talking about someone's livelihood and someone's life. So uh, that is one of the things that unfortunately, um, let's just say he's not guilty, landed him in jail. Um, where are you guilty of making threats? Are you guilty of having some sort of indication verbally that you wanted this done? Um, let's say that he did do it. Let's say that he did hire someone. And that is true that he really, really wanted Alan to move forward with that. Um, if that is the case, then yes, he needs to be in jail. Um, but I'm not just 100% convinced. I need more information. It makes me very doubtful to defend Joe when you're burning files and you're burning things. Once again, going back to where we had that explosion of fire, really, really making me think that this is how you get rid of dirty stuff that you've been doing. Um, yeah, it really has me 50-50 on everything. Um, that I'm not convinced that no one is 100% innocent. Let me know what you think. Um, subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. And if you make comments in the comment section, please make sure not to comment spoiler information for those who have not finished the series. Stay tuned for the final episode of this Netflix original docuseries, Tiger King. Until next time, bye!